In this lecture, we're going to do two things. First, we're going to get some practice using the formula for the equation of the slope of a line that we talked about in the previous lecture. Uh, and once we've got these numbers, we're going to talk about how we can use them to kind of get some information about the lines themselves. All right, so I'm going to start with these first two points here, 1 comma 1 and 6 comma 7. And I'll draw the line connecting them. Right, So we're trying to find the slope of this line here. And you remember what the formula looks like. The formula is the change in the y values, it's the difference of the y values, divided by the difference of the x values. Well, the y values are 7 and 1, and the x values are 6 and 1. So I'll put the difference on the, of the y's on the top and the x's on the bottom. And now it's just a little arithmetic. 7 minus 1 is 6, and 6 minus 1 is 5. So the slope of that line is 6 fifths. All right, now I've got another pair of points here for us to take a look at. Right, 1 comma 7 and 6 comma 1. And again, if we kind of visualize the line, right, that's the line whose slope we're trying to find here. And the process is going to be the same. Right, we use the same formula. We're going to do the same difference. Uh, the difference of the y's on the top, that's 7 minus 1. The difference of the x's on the bottom, that's 1 minus 6. You do the arithmetic, and you get negative 6 fifths. All right, so compare these two results. All right, on the one side, I got a positive result, and on the other side, I got a negative result. And it, it helps to see what's going on to remember the slope is the rate of change of the line. If you look at the line on the left, you kind of always think we're going from left to right. This line is increasing, and its slope is positive. On the other side, the line is decreasing, and just like we would expect from something that's decreasing, its slope or its rate of change is negative. So just by looking at the sign of the slope, that's enough information to tell us whether or not our line is going to be increasing or decreasing. So I've got two more points for us to look at here. All right, we'll start with uh, negative 1, comma, negative 7, and 6, comma, 7. Those are these two points here. And again, we're, we're thinking about the line between them, all right? So this the slope of this line that we're trying to find. And hopefully this is getting a little familiar by now, right? It's the change of the y values divided by the change in the x values. Now, one question that I often get asked, does it matter which one comes first, right? Does it matter if I, if I do uh, these points coordinates minus these points? Or the other way around, right? Who gets to be x1? Who gets to be x2? In other words, and the answer is, it really doesn't matter. You're going to get the same answer either way. And if you think about it, that that hopefully makes some sense. The slope of the line is what it is. It shouldn't matter which points I use to find it or which order I enter the points into the formula. We should always get the same number no matter what. Now, now that I've said that, as a practical matter. If I have two points like this, I'm going to let these two points be x2, y2, and I'm going to let these two be x1, y1. In other words, I'm going to do this. Negative 7 minus 7 over negative 1 minus 6. The, the reason that I picked them that way is if I had done them the other way around, I would have had 7 minus minus 7 over 6 minus minus 1. Now, you're going to get the same answer, but you've got, the, you've got all those double negatives to work with. And it's not that we don't know how to work with negative numbers. I'm sure everyone here does. But it's just one thing, if I can eliminate that one little bit of complexity from the calculations, it's just one less thing i got to worry about. So if I have a choice, I'm going to put the numbers in the order that makes the negatives easier to work with. Right, so now, if, if you do the simplification here, this comes out to 14 sevenths, uh, which is just 2. All right, so now let's look at the other points. Negative 7, 5, and 6, 7. We'll sketch that line in here again, so we have it to look at. And same formula, difference of the y values over difference of the x values. And if we put the numbers in here, uh, we get uh, 5 minus 7. That's the difference of the y's over minus 7 minus 6. You do some simplification. That comes out to 2 thirteenths. Now, again, let's think about what these what these numbers are telling us. If you look at that left-hand point, uh, that left-hand line, 
it's going up pretty quickly, right? It's, it's pretty steep. And by slope standards, anyway, two is a fairly large number, right? Relatively large, anyway. Uh, certainly compared to the other side. Two thirteenths, on the other hand, is a relatively small number. It's fairly close to zero. A low, a low slope indicates a line that's increasing slowly, and that's exactly what we're seeing uh, in that graph. So in the next lecture, uh, we're going to take a look at what's called the inclination of a line. We're, we're going to look at how what the relationship is between the slope of a line and the angle that that line makes with the x-axis. Now, doing that is going to require a little bit of trigonometry. Right? So if you aren't familiar with trigonometry yet, uh, obviously you're welcome to go ahead and watch it anyway, uh, but it won't hurt anything if you just skip to the next lecture after that one.